Welcome to the channel. Uh, this is a quick video about how to make any footage that you shot in 24 FPS appear as though it were shot at 60 or 120. It's a really neat trick. Let's hop into it. So while this is loading up, I'll say that this trick has saved me a bunch of times. But to be honest, I don't even really shoot in anything above 24 anymore, at least on this camera. I'm shooting on a Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K, the full frame model. I don't really shoot anything more than 24 for what I'm doing if I'm shooting a product or honestly anything that I know that's going to be slowed down. I can just do this trick. And, and it works great now obviously if you're planning ahead if you're not like running and gunning shooting in 60 or 120 is obviously better but this is a good fix in a pinch okay so i got a clip in my timeline this clip is from a wedding that i shot last april and you can see here it's of the bride and the groom uh after the ceremony uh we're getting some b-roll shots nice basic kiss right really simple nothing too crazy here i do have my render cache turned on and my settings for render cache are uh, dnx hrsq uh, that is a really lightweight render cache format so that you don't have to sit and wait for render cache files to generate a ton of time so i have my clip fully cached so what i'm gonna do to start at least is I'm going to come over to my retime and scaling right here in the inspector. You can see here in retime process, you're gonna pick optical flow. What optical flow does, if you're not already aware, is it uses AI and computer learning to basically guess what the next frame is gonna be. Uh, so if you have 24 frames and you stretch it out to 50% speed, you're missing frames and if you play it back at full 100% speed it's going to be choppy so optical flow does its best to kind of like guess what the in-between frame is going to be where davinci resolve is just genius is in motion estimation there's a, a setting here called speed warp better or speed warp faster depending on the computer you have if you're running davinci resolve 17 or 18 still uh you won't have the option for faster or better it's just going to say speed warp in da davinci resolve 19 it gives you the option for faster or better just to better accommodate whatever computer system you're using i'm using a pretty beefy computer at the moment so i'm going to choose speed warp better and you'll watch how it's going to reload our uh, render cache down here while this is thinking i'm going to drag this clip out and this clip normally is about four almost five seconds right you're at four seconds 19 frames i'm gonna drag this out to even 40 percent okay so now we're at 12 seconds let this render cache and watch how well this works this is actually pretty crazy bada bing bada boom we're done watch this see how smooth that is isn't that crazy look how smooth that is that looks like it was shot on 60 or 120 but it's shot, it's pure 24. Like, look, I'll go up to my inspector, file properties, 23976. Isn't that nuts? Like, I, that's absolutely crazy to me. Uh, it obviously just depends on the clip that you're using. So if you're using like a super jagged clip, uh, it's not gonna be like perfect. Like if it's if it really needs some stabilization, uh, like if there's if it's not steady at all, this might not work so well. If you're a good shooter and, and you're comfortable with your camera, 95% of the time this is going to work and it's going to work really well. Uh, let me find another clip here that we could uh, test this on. Look, so if you've ever shot a wedding before, you know that after the ceremony, usually the photographer and videographer will uh, take the couple aside and get some nice B-roll shots of them. And in this particular instance, it was on kind of like a cowboy ranch farm sort of area. You can see here this clip, it's, it's full regular 24. 20, oh, sorry, 23976. You can see this isn't a very long clip. This clip here is no more than three seconds and five frames. So I'm gonna repeat this process again. I'm gonna come over to video. Under the retime and scaling, you go to project settings, optical flow, project settings for motion estimation, speed warp better or faster. I'm gonna choose better, faster works just fine also. And then right click. Go to retime controls. I want to change how long this is. I'm going to drag this out to, I'm going to say even 35%. I'm going to try pushing it. Sometimes if you go too much, it gives you a little bit of a hard time, but you always want to try to push it. Does you know, it just depends on how slow you want it to be. If you want it to be super slow, push the envelope. And if it doesn't work, speed it up a little bit. Just find, you got to find the sweet spot for the specific clip. And I promise when it works, it works really well. I'm going to let this finish render caching. Okay, and we're cached. So you saw what it looked like before. Now let me show you what it looks like now. Press play. Look how slow that is. What I set this to? I set this to 
I took a clip that was three seconds and five frames and made it nine seconds and two frames. And it looks like it was shot in slow motion. Like this is just one of those few things in DaVinci Resolve that just make it, in my opinion, better than the competition. Uh, just because there's these little things that when you know them and you know when to use them and you know how to use them, you can really leverage the footage that you do have to your advantage. And I'm just really stoked with how this works. And you'll be surprised with how often you can use this in your own projects for even things that you might not even think need it. So if you learned something or you think you might even use this in the future at any point, uh, give me a like. It helps the algorithm. I'm really trying to uh, boost up my content. Uh, if you liked it, subscribe. And if you want to see more or if you want to learn more, if you want to uh, become an editing master, so to say. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you in the next video. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm trying to just find out how I'm going to close this. Okay, we're cutting.